this is a small overview of where I'm at with the MS3 uh, 440 Mopar project here. Um, haven't fired it yet, but I'm um, really close. So uh, right now it's completely wired. Uh, that's the MS3 um, relay board. I'm not so sure. I'm happy with that. We'll have to see how long longevity goes with that. It's a little. It seems a little uh, flimsy, but there's other guys using it. We'll see how it goes. But right now everything's loomed, um, or it's ran, and I will clean it up and loom it all together once we fire it and uh, make sure everything's running good. But just an overview of the sensors. Um, I've got an air intake temp uh, temperature sensor. Uh, this is a GM sensor. All these are pretty much GM sensors, save for a couple, but um, the idle air control valve, GM, LS style. TPS, also GM, LS style. Um, down here is a coolant sensor. Again, GM. All these came off of a 2003 Saturn. Uh, they're all the same. Uh, the other GM sensor that's on here is the engine uh, map sensor. Um, so it's LS style, this guy right here. I have two map sensors on it. And I've got uh, this GM one bar here and then there's a 2.5 bar built into the MS3 uh, unit that I'm using uh, for altitude correction. So it's just ran to atmosphere right now. Um, let's see, what else? The Jeep cam position sensor. So this came out of a Jeep Wrangler. This is where the distributor was, obviously, on the 440. Uh, I made the bushing. It drops right in, engages the uh, oil pump drive on the motor, and uh, works good. So it's a Hall Effect sensor, so it's three-wire hookup. Um, it's one of the important ones. The other important one is the VR sensor. Uh, it came off of a Ford, and you can see it there with the with the uh, toothed wheel. Um, it's a shielded cable. You can kind of see the shield sticking off that off that cable. Um, but right now cranking I get uh, good sync and I don't have any loss and the timing's dead on so um, that's pretty much all the sensors. Uh, the coils are off of a LS engine D585 coils so the truck coils supposedly they have more spark. Um, I don't know. They're plenty for this motor. Um, the wires I made off out of my existing uh, wires that were on the 440, and I just uh, purchased the separate LS style boots from Summit and uh, fabbed up my own, put some socks on it. Uh, there's this side. And the injectors came out of a 6.2 Raptor. Um, the 32 pound an hour injectors. Um, they're a little small for my application. Uh, required fuel it says I'll be right up there, uh, right on the edge of useful. So we'll have to run the car and see how it does. I'll probably turn up the fuel pressure um, related to that. Here's the here's the pressure regulator, fuel pressure regulator. Um, I just put it right on the right on the rail there. Crosses over, and uh, that's all I have left to do is is hook up. Um, the input line to the pump and I'll be able to fire this thing and start tuning but um, so that's the overview of all the sensors and parts all the pigtails all these sensors and stuff came out of junkyard so they're easily easily found um, right now I've got it hooked to the laptop I'm going to key on the uh, I'll key on the car here and you'll see it uh, register to come to life you actually might hear the uh, injectors go through their purge cycle or their prime cycle when I start when I uh, key this on here. So there we go. Um, you'll see the air fuel ratio drop here as it figures out where it's at. Uh, eventually, it's going to realize that it's extremely lean and display that and go out of range. Ah, there it goes. Um, let's see here. I don't know if this guy will focus very well, but engine map, so that's the LS style. And then you see this other uh, 
Uh, I've got this other one set up as barometer, so that's the one that's out uh, just in the atmosphere. They're pretty close, 91.2 kPa, 91.8 kPa, so you can see the difference in the two maps there. Fuel load shows it's really high, obviously, because it engine thinks it's at uh, 91 kPa right now. Um, throttle position, you can see if I uh, hand cycle the throttle here, you'll see that reflect on the gauge up here. 100% full open. So you can get the you can get everything set up and kind of uh, make sure things are looking good. Um, coolant temp shows 73 degrees. Uh, manifold air temp shows 70 78 degrees. So they're pretty close to each other. That's looking good. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put it into test mode and show you some of the cool stuff there. Okay, injector test. Um, what I've got here is an output interval of uh, 50 milliseconds. Um, sequence, I can do individual, all of them at the same time. Sequence will do all of them up to the last injector. So if I just want to sequence A and B, it'll just do the two. If I want to sequence all of them, I can do up to injector H. Pulse width is uh, 15 milliseconds. Total number of injections is 1,000. So if I start this up, it'll just uh, literally cycle the injectors. Um, you can see here where it's it's giving an RPM of 2,398 if this was actually running. So let me start this up and you'll hear them. There we go. So now you can actually hear the injectors firing. I think this is a great tool uh, if you wanted to try to find a bad injector. Um, so we can go ahead and stop that. And uh, I'll move to spark. Um, so what I've got is I've got one spark plug grounded. Just set it on top of the valve cover right in the uh, right in the spark plug wire. And right now I've got it uh, set at the same thing. Output interval 50 milliseconds. This is going to be simulated simulating a 2,398 RPM as if it were running there. Uh, coil testing mode is 1 instead of sequence because I'm just going to show the 1. And I've got it set to coil H, um, which happens to be the last coil. Dwell in milliseconds is um, how much dwell you're giving that guy before the coil fires. Um, on these D585s, a higher dwell uh, tends to give you a hotter spark up to a point. Um, 4 milliseconds, 5 milliseconds can come, cause problems in higher RPMs. So I'm going to put it at 3.8. Um, I need to turn on my fuel pump to do this because the uh, relay that powers the coils is ran off the fuel pump. So fuel pump on and I can start this. And there we go. So coil H is firing as it should. I just wanted to demonstrate the difference between the milliseconds and dwell time and why it's so important. So right now I've got this in test mode at 2 milliseconds on the dwell. So we're, we're going to let this cool, coil dwell for 2 milliseconds before it fires. And we'll look at the spark. So let's turn that on. Alright, so what I'm going to do now is stop it. I'm going to bump the dwell up to 5 milliseconds and let's look at uh, how much brighter the spark is. Hopefully we'll be able to see it on the video. I'm not sure if you will or not, but we'll give it a try. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's significantly larger um, to my eye. Um, I don't know if I can change this on the fly, but we'll try it. Looks like it can, so I'm just going to turn this down. So let's see if we can watch the spark get smaller. Sure enough, you can. So that's at 1.2 milliseconds. I'm going to ramp it back up. Now we're back up at 5. 